I was driving home and the first tower fell yeah. and we all stopped our cars and got out of our cars and turned around and everyone looked at each other like, no, what are we seeing? How is this possible? The Mercedes Benz interview lounge. Yeah, so uh, Patty Steele is here, the smartest woman I know. <laughs> Do we know where the term dildo came from? With the exception of the other women in this room. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just I accuse you of being the smartest. I'm hoping you will answer the question. Uh, yeah, sure. We Googled sure. it. We can't find right, it. That's exactly what I'm doing. Well, then never mind. We'll get uh, into something uh, else then. Yeah, some guy named Joe Dildo. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph. Yeah. We're thinking, thinking Donnie Dildo. or <laughs> Donnie Dildo. Ew. Derek. Some Derek. Guy, <laughs> those names don't sound as... <laughs> I Joe don't. Dildo sounds okay. Donnie. Exactly. <laughs> Derek. Donnie sounds seedy. So, yeah, so right? Patty and I have been really good friends since 1980, the end of the In 1980s. kindergarten. Yes. And uh, Patty, of course, and I worked together here on Z100 for many years. Mm-hmm. And I always knew that Patty had this love and passion for all things history. Yes, I do. And now your podcast. Yes, <laughs> it's been doing great. Actually, going to add, and I don't know if you know this, <laughs> I should tell you since it's on your platform. What? Uh, adding a third episode probably next, at the beginning of next month. Really? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, you know, there's a demand. <laughs> wow, that's so cool. <laughs> For right. eight minute history stories. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. It's awesome. But when, once you get her started, it's kind of hard to get her stopping. Okay. Because she just yeah. loves history. I, For instance, I mean, we all know about the night that President Lincoln and Mary Todd Lincoln went mm-hmm. to the theater yeah. Yeah. to watch a play, <laughs> and then he was shot, and he, he he passed away. But Patty's question is, well, do you know who else was in the box yeah. with the Lincolns? I'm right. like, was, never even cared there was anyone else in the box, but it turned into a great story. Who was it? Just it's, in a nutshell, who was in the box with them? Um, it was Henry and Clara, who were engaged at the time, even though they were stepbrother and sister. Um, oh. And okay. yeah, they it there it didn't go well for them after that. Oh. They they didn't it like was, Mary Todd at all though. Well, she liked Mary Todd, which is why they managed to get an invite into the box because she was one of the few people that did. No one liked Mary Todd Lincoln. Yeah, she, she seemed like a pill, a raging bitch. <laughs> just off. That's a good word for it. <laughs> wow. awful woman. She had some issues. She well, she lost issues. her ki- couple of her kids died. Yeah, I mean, you know, depression back then. She you know. had she had some other issues. Yeah. That... Stop defending Mary well, Todd I'm Lincoln. Well, you're saying back then they didn't have you didn't go to the therapist when things happened. You know, right? And Don't she you... was a really smart woman yeah. without any outlet for that other than to, you know, protect her husband yeah. and, and you know, try to push him into doing what he eventually yeah. did. So. Was President Lincoln gay or bisexual? You know, there's a lot of people that talk about that, and there's certainly many books that have been written on it. Didn't he share his bed with some guy for but several years? But a lot years? of people did in those days. Uh, you did? would You would travel. I know you did. <laughs> <laughs> hey. That's a whole different story. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. That's right. We didn't know each other for many years. <laughs> That's right. And I'm kidding. So I'm, you know too much. <laughs> you know You know. I'm kidding. Anyway, go ahead. People yeah, did share beds? Oh, so, sure. Like, you would travel, and because there, you know, there wasn't a million hotels around, you would check into a little inn and they would say yeah there's space in this bed you would sleep with people you didn't even know oh wow, wow. god beds knows i have bed <laughs> beds were <laughs> what, a, what a why did i live back then <laughs> oh my god i thought he was a vampire lady hey, wasn't that sorry. the rumor yeah, oh, yeah right. that movie. <laughs> he was vampire hunter yeah, yeah. Vamp- oh yeah 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 vampire hunter well i tell you what let's talk about uh you know something a little more serious <laughs> let's talk about the, the significance of this day yeah and uh, we, we were talking about how it was 23 years ago today mm-hmm. that we were all together doing the morning show, yep. and uh, it was the w- the weather was identical to the forecast we it was have today. This beautiful it, September day in I New know. York City, yeah. And the day started out like another typical, you know, us talking about things that really didn't matter. And by the time you get to you know the time that all of this began, which was 8:46 was the first plane hitting you you know how that goes with morning shows you're kind of gearing down everybody's getting ready to head out and and I was alone in the studio where I was working which was uh, WPLJ which doesn't exist anymore and um and this guy called and he said I think a missile just hit the World Trade Center and I yeah said, see we heard helicopter yeah. and I said mm. okay And I said, let me check. And I went into the ABC newsroom, WABC newsroom, and I said, "Um, 
you know, I just got this call. And they went, no. And literally at that moment, everything, all the phones started ringing. And so then they called. And, you know, of course, it all began to unfold. And we wound up staying on the air till 9 o'clock that night. I couldn't get home. I had little, tiny, tiny, tiny children. And I kept looking at the Hudson River and thinking, if I have to, I'll swim. Because I wanted to get to my kids. I kept, it's, it's so amazing. All these years later... You still feel that emotion of what you felt. And I was standing there, and I knew that Penn Station was below us and the Empire State Building a block away. And you just don't know what's going to happen next. And I remember trying to feel if there was any vibration in the floor while we were standing there in those few, especially that first couple of hours before we knew whether there was going to be more, you know. And... um, we had people calling. There was a woman who called from the tower that hadn't been hit yet, and she said, and she said to us, she said, people are going crazy over there. She said, I just saw somebody throw a computer through a window. And um, she said, they need to calm down. It's going to be fine. She didn't know what was going she, on. She didn't know, and she was way up in the other tower. Right. Yikes. Yeah. You know, so we were in Jersey City watching the whole thing because mm-hmm. our studios were built on the Hudson River to showcase the World Trade Center. Yep, right. That was the center of our... So you had like a television yeah, view. Yeah, it was a wild. A bird's eye view. Yeah. It was wild. And, you know, we didn't... We, we, it was first reported it was a helicopter. Then it was a small plane. Then it was right. re- reported it was a passenger plane. Right. And then by the time we are putting all that together, the second plane hit the other tower. Yeah. And that's when it all became what it became. And, and didn't you feel like... What are we watching? Yeah, yes. well, you don't know because you it, can't process it. Well, if it's happening right in front of you, you feel like you're watching a movie. You know, yes. it doesn't seem real because yeah. who would want to do that? Right. Why would why do, why would two pilots make the same mistake in the right. same day? Oh, then yeah. we quickly figured it out. It made me feel more like a um, a movie when I was driving home, and the first tower fell. Yeah. And we all stopped our cars and got out of our cars and turned around and everyone looked at each other like. Whoa. No. What are we seeing? How is this possible? Right. And it was just... Right. I saw the second tower fall in my rear view mirror as I was driving wow. away from Jersey City. Gandhi, where were you? I was in school. You were. This is 23 years ago, so you were only... How old were you? I would have been 16, 15. So you were old enough to understand what was going on, sort of. I'm Like, kind of. I mean, I remember we walked into class and then we saw our teacher had it on the TV. Um, and we saw what was going on, and you couldn't tell how big a plane had hit from just the view that we were watching. Right, right. So everybody was kind of thinking, oh, this is a mistake, a little prop plane yeah. ran into it. And my teacher, I remember him saying, no, you guys don't understand the size of the plane that hit that building. That is a massive building. A giant plane hit it. We saw the second plane hit, yeah. and my teacher said, the world will never be the same. And he was right. Wow. He was really yeah. right. What, what town Government. were you in? What city were you in? I was in? in South Florida. Right. Mm. Yeah. Jeez. Flanagan High School. Crazy. Wow. So, you know, oh God, I'm getting the, the goosebumps. Yeah, I know. Um, it's, uh, and look what's happened. I was I was telling uh, them, I was walking around the city yesterday. It was a beautiful day. And I was noticing it in you know, the Hudson Yards area, this and that, how the shape of the city has so changed since yeah. that day 23 years ago. We lost those two huge towers along with all that life, yeah. right? Yeah. And then this one tower is erected. And then you see other towers. The people who left us that day were, may not recognize the city that we live in now because New York City is always, always changing. Oh, it well, you know, it's funny. I was just looking I've, on one of my many history sites. Um, I got this this thing that showed me a picture of this beautiful old farmhouse sitting on a hill. And it said, in 1879, this was at the corner of Broadway and 84th Street. Wow. Well, and wow. you see this, wow. you see this old, and it's a, it's like you're out in the countryside, and it's a farmhouse on a hill, and that's not. I mean, you think, okay, eighteen seventy, it wasn't that it's long not ago. Not that long no, ago, no. You know, it's really, it's really pretty wild. I'm like, so as far as history goes, yeah. And I know, I know that you wanted. I'm looking at the clock. We're going to have to take a hard break in like three minutes, sure. but we, but we'll come back and do our moment of silence, and we can continue this conversation. Yeah. I know you're in a hurry. You have lots going no, on. No, no, no. I'm, I'm good. I, I'm. I'm I'm looking because every time someone walks in my house at my house, it rings a bell. You heard those little yeah, tingles. I get that too. <laughs> yeah, yes. But as far as history goes, yeah, I know I know that you sn- sniff out all sorts of things that we have no clue about. Yeah, give me a short a short something. 
Oh, I, <laughs> there's a million of them. I, um, I actually have a podcast running right now that's really kind of fun, and I did it because I wanted to not be too serious. I didn't expect it to run today, but it did. <laughs> but it, it's about how teachers back in the 1800s, things that were expected of teachers. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at this list, and these were posted in schoolhouses. They were not allowed to... Dry, uh, dye their hair. They weren't allowed to loiter at ice cream shops. What? They weren't allowed. Male teachers, they said that if you get a shave at a barber shop, people will question your morals and your honesty. Who knew that you couldn't go to a barber shop or an ice cream store? Well, ice cream stores back then were places where people dated. That was a romantic spot in town. You, See, I didn't realize the, that. The, the, well, I was alive then. I should know. <laughs> <laughs> and but, women weren't allowed to get married. They weren't while well, they were teachers, wow. and they or do anything else with men. So it, there was a lot of restrictions, and it's really interesting because you look at what goes on in schools today. Oh yeah, it's a different scene. But, it is. It, you know, God bless teachers. Now they have OnlyFans pages. <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. Amazing. They haven't outlawed it's a lot different. that at all. It what is. about New York City? Hmm. Here we are in the middle of this incredible vibrating thing. Thing. Right. right. You know a lot about the history of New York City. Yeah, I, I am fascinated by it because if you go back in time, it was this beautiful, bucolic, you know, hilly trees there there were forests there were farms right wow. where we're sitting right now right and um it wasn't that long ago there's a couple of little places around the city where you can still see remnants of that there's a great building i think it's on 66 on the east side that's like a it was built in the early 1800s as a as a farmhouse for one of i think it was john adams daughter and eventually turned into a little hotel and it still sits there, and it's you can visit it. It's wow. a historic. Outlet. It's not all steel and glass. No. No. There's Although a, next door to it is all steel and glass. It, it's funny how, <laughs> well, it's all worth something. Right. Because it's all about the money. Yeah. Tell you what, we're going to take a break. And coming up next, we are going to observe a moment of silence and play some special music. And Patty Steele's with us. Let's talk more history coming up. <laughs> Every show we do is a blessing. Every show we're able to do here on this is historically important radio station here in New York and of all the stations we're on around the country is a gift for us. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to uh, September 11th, this is a different day. This day, it lands differently for for a lot of people. A lot of people uh, around the world, here in New York, in other areas that were (laughs) right there on the the front line of what happened that day, 23 years ago. Uh, And every year, we always observe a moment of silence, and we will forevermore, as long as we're in the studio doing the show. We will. Patty Steele is joining us. Thank she you. was doing she was doing radio here, as we were, a lot of us were doing radio that morning 23 years ago. And in exactly two minutes, we will observe our moment of silence, as we do every year. Yeah. Did you, did you, I don't know if you caught, they, it was a repeat, but it was worth watching on 60 Minutes the other night. Um, uh they had this incredible just interviewing and a lot of the people they interviewed were not only firefighters but the children of firefighters right. who now are also firefighters themselves oh, wow. and you watch that and you see these people talk and some of them were babies when their parent was lost others were you know young kids and you you still feel like you were saying earlier we were talking and you said you felt the chills you still get that. You still, and I don't know if it's because we were here at that time, or if it's just that empathetic reaction to someone when you see someone who, you know, there was one family that had um, ten children, eight boys, two girls, and their dad was a firefighter. And most of these guys went on to become firefighters, and their tears and their the stories they told, what they remembered of their dad, and what happened in the aftermath with firefighters helping raise them and right. bringing them, you know, happiness as much as they could, is was really touching. It's a really amazing thing, and you wonder, will we ever lose that that emotion? Well, and we're so close to it because that was a moment in history that changed the world as i mean look at other the, the other massive moments of history yeah, that been changed the world so many that changed the explosion of the main we talked about that 1898 the titanic pearl harbor there were so many right. moments like that well we now observe as we do every year a moment of silence on september 11th <laughs> Beautiful song, Casey Musgraves in Rainbow. 
what a great a great song for this year's moment of silence. Gandhi Thank you. Gandhi has amazing. tears in her eyes. Thank you, Gandhi. <laughs> oh, you're so welcome. That song is just pretty amazing. It is. It and uh, what a day. We're joined by our friend Patty Steele. We're talking all things history, all things 9-11, and all things is whatever we want to talk about. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is an emotional day. I got a little tear in my eye. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's such a good I know. Song. It's hard. It's, it's that time. You know, again, we go back to these moments that change the world, and... Um, for for us, for those of us who are here, and I think for those of us, for those watching from without and further away, it was uh, a pivotal moment. Um, although it's kind of interesting, I I know that my husband was working at another yet another radio station at the time, and about two days later, somebody called him and goes, "Where have you been? I've been trying to get a hold of you." Somebody from a record company in L.A. Right, <laughs> and he was like. Well, have you been watching the news? <laughs> yeah, oh, but wow. uh, that was two days ago. Yeah. And it's funny how people, I mean, uh, you either really connect and you understand the the humanity and the human toll, or you think, wow, that's annoying, you know? And uh, and I guess we have to move, and we got to move on. Mm. But um, I think for those of us who feel something, it, as painful as it is, it it enriches your life in some way because you begin to empathize with what other people are feeling and that's like the greatest thing we can do as human beings well and it's, yeah it seems like after 23 years have passed a lot of us have gone out of that habit mm-hmm. yeah. and we should roll back in yeah no kidding <laughs> so it's that day reminder. uh we uh i my my friend dennis was in town and we packed up the car and we headed out to where i lived out in new jersey mm-hmm. out at the farm right <laughs> We drove out there on this sunny day, and I said, let's go gas up the car, because we don't know what's next. Yeah. And uh, people were just kind of going about their day as if, I I don't think anyone knew what was going on in the city, one hour in our rearview mirror, you know, one hour behind us. And then the next day, you know, I got up, we got up early to drive to Jersey City to do the show, and uh, we were told, look, there's people with machine guns on those roads that lead to your studios. It's going to, you're going to have to show them ID and tell them what you do, and maybe they'll let you in, maybe they won't, because it was right on the river, right? Right. And uh, they were already on Route 78 coming east toward New York City. There were already American flags hanging off of bridges. Off the bridges and all that. And that's when we found out. And we lived through these days and months of feelings that we'd never experienced in our lives. This unification, this pride that we had in this country. It was amazing. Remember I, that? Yeah. You know, that... It was like that moment people were nice <laughs> to each other. I don't know. Well, because I was trapped in the city, I was lucky to get a hotel room, although no services in the hotel. And the next morning, I had to drive back down to... And I had to go through like a um, roadblocks, and I told him what I was doing, and and the guy said to me, oh, "What are you doing in the city?" And I I started to cry, and I said, "I would rather be with my children, but I can't get out of the city. They're my babies." And um, and then for my, I, how long afterwards, I would have to drive through the Lincoln Tunnel to go to work, and I had I would I had a mom car like this big suburban with baby seats in it. They searched my car every morning mm-hmm. going through the tunnel and yep. you know so that I could get to work it was a it was a wild time and you but you didn't complain because you knew that they were just trying to take care of us then they were wow anyway yeah. there you have it it just it, we were all affected differently like Danielle yep I just remember the next day like how much everyone helped everybody how we were on the air all day for days like right like hours mm-hmm. and someone would call and we'd put them on the air and they'd be at ground zero and they'd say we need you know food or water and I, 15 minutes later someone brought it to them like it was just immediate people were just helping each other whatever you need we got you back yeah they were lined up down the west side yeah highway yeah just trying to bring supplies to people. The one thing I noticed, and I don't know if you guys noticed this, you know, people in New York are famous for, you know, you're walking on the street, you're walking fast, and you're not making eye contact. And that is a thing about how people maneuver through the city. Everybody was looking at each other. And And you could see the pain in some people's eyes. You could see just a connection, but there was also a, a warmth there, like we're here together. We're in this together. It was an interesting time. Then we stopped looking at each other again. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the first day we laughed. Yeah. Yeah. We, we were doing the show. I don't even know how many days after 9-11. 
and someone said something funny and we all laughed and we stopped because it was we hadn't heard that noise in a while. And I'm not kidding. Yeah. We, didn't know, we didn't know if it was okay to do it. Was it was okay to laugh. Right. right. And then we realized, yeah, it's time to laugh. Yeah. It's time for us to be human here again. Yeah. And um, I don't know. <laughs> I, you, We don't want anything like that to ever happen again. Will it happen? It will in our lifetime. Maybe not. Yeah. But why does it take that for us to... To come together. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, everybody talks about how during World War II the country was so united, and I th- and I and it is a sad uh, testament to human nature that we have to go through unbelievable pain and upset in order to find each other and find the humanity in other people. But it seems to be the way we operate. So. Seems to be. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What's up, uh, Nate? I don't know where we are. Yes, Nate. What's up? It's a world that doesn't exist anymore. That mm-hmm. day, remember? Yeah. Because uh, technology, the information that we have at our fingertips, getting text messages about things. Yeah. I was going into a class. I was in college at the time. And going into the class and stuff had started happening in New York and people are getting this filtered information about it. And the teacher, the professor goes, okay, thanks for showing up. I know there's some weird stuff going on. It's in class for an hour and a half. Nobody knew what was going on for that hour and a half. We get out and the campus was empty. Yeah. And that Where were you in e- school? I was at Penn State. Okay. And uh, that doesn't exist anymore. Everybody yeah. gets that information so quickly right. on their phones. Yeah. And there was probably a lot of people in a blackout where they were working, they were doing something, they didn't have anybody calling them. And that doesn't exist anymore. No. No, you you're, know? you're right. We so, know when something bad happens immediately, immediately now. Yeah. Right. Sometimes we know when things are bad happening and then we find out that it was all a lie it never happened yeah <laughs> this is this uh-oh is, conspiracy theorists no no it's true <laughs> do you hey, remember where we were the day before uh we were at we were playing games at Dave, Dave and Buster's, Buster's. yeah Up in and they had just rolled out this whole big initiative for the radio station oh. that moving forward this is what we were going to do and it was a whole big thing yep. and the next day they scrapped the whole thing of course they did wow yeah we had a diff- we had a different marching orders yeah. i remember in our studios uh, looking you know at the right at world trade center the smoke was still bellowing for out for months from the pile. Yeah. yeah. And then we saw smoke on our side of the river where you live, Gandhi. Mm. I'm like, oh my God, there's a fire downstairs. We looked down there. It was out back steakhouse. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they were grilling up things. Grilling to, it up. They yeah. were grilling up because that was where the docks were, where the, all of the supplies left from beneath our building. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They were down there grilling up, you know, maybe bo- frying up yeah. some they were feeding blooming everybody. onions. They were feeding everyone. Yeah. Blooming onions. <laughs> blooming onions, everything. <laughs> look, you know, um, and then we, looking to today and forward, the positives that came out of something that was so god awful uh you can do things to help people you can look out for other people you can find you can commit one day a year to going somewhere and helping a bunch of people you don't know put mm-hmm. together a meal for people who need food there are a thousand trillion things you can do um and you can but, find the humanity in other people i i keep going back to that because it's so easy to just say you know, person, 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 or just walk past them. Mm-hmm. And instead, you know, if you stop and think that everybody has a story, everybody has something that they feel deeply about, um, something that's painful, something that makes them happy. And when you can find that little bit of humanity in other people, I think it enriches all of our lives, you know? Well, absolutely. And that's what make, makes you want to be of service Yeah, for other people. Yeah. Even for you, Scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well look you know it's such a gift it's such a gift to uh to be able to be with each other and to talk about this and yeah. you know and uh, how you uh, observe this day is is a personal thing maybe you don't want to hear a bunch of wackos on the radio talking wacko stuff mm-hmm. or maybe you're in the mood for something fun and whatever that's you yeah. and, and we we support you no matter where you are patty Steele's podcast is called the backstory with patty Steele. thank you and i encourage you I, even if you've never really been a history nut or slightly interested in history, she will make you want to know more about things that have happened before the moment you're in right now. And that's history. Thank you. That we, is history. It's absolutely. it's it's once again, here we go again. It's the humanity in the in people in the past. They're not just dusty folks. It's not just stuff in a history book. It's human beings that wanted the same things and felt the same things you and I feel. They just had a different set of circumstances they operated in. And so it's it's sort of fascinating to find out how they dealt with all of that and reacted to that. 
you know. So give it a listen. It's the backstory with Patty Steele. And by the way, sometimes it's very racy. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it is. So, so, I think voice. it's time for another racy one, huh? I think it's time to. Get, <laughs> I think so. You can get raunchy with it. Sure. We love you, Patty Steele. Thanks for coming in. Oh, delighted. Patty, thank you. Patty Steele, thank you. Yay, Patty. The Mercedes Benz Interview Lounge.